Hi. Uh, we all remember the forces of attraction and forces of repulsion in school. We studied it. I surely understood forces of repulsion when I saw the topic uh, iron carbon diagram during my pre-seed training. Uh, and the saga which started that day uh, continued for a good three decades successfully where I omitted this topic for my studies till I became chief engineer and beyond. Uh, but uh, with age, uh, perspectives change, you know. Uh, I started wondering how come in history an army of a few thousands defeated an army of a few in tens of thousands? Is it strategy? Maybe. But uh, I realized that it could be pure material science, you know. In the historic times, the guy with a better and stronger sword can kill many more. The guy with better arrowheads wins. Or the guy with the better shield can surprise the enemy. So, I am sure you guessed it right. It was all about material science and carbon content. What is mild steel? What is cast steel? Uh, how did they get their names? Why do we prefer a very particular type of steel, etc, etc. We will try and answer all these questions in this video. Uh, I decided to somehow understand it in my humble way to appreciate history and of course also a bit of marine engineering as a bonus. Uh, this video is simply uh, uh, part one on this topic. The follow up video will sort out uh, this topic completely. The video is not about being perfect technically. There is a small effort in storytelling. It is an attempt to understand the concepts and remember this topic in such a way that it makes some sense. For authentic and expert notes on this subject, I suggest you go to the internet or AI. This video is not for easy goers, it is for those who wish to challenge themselves. All the best, have a great time understanding and hopefully enjoying this topic. Thank you so much. So, our goal is to understand something about steel, which is what makes the majority of material on board a ship. We will try and understand what is steel, what is cast iron, what is cast steel, what is iron carbon diagram etc. in our own unique way. Here you can see the iron carbon diagram. If you understand this, you can understand many things. But you see this is real complicated and we cannot jump into this. We have to start slowly. Let's start from school level. I think it's better. We will develop the so-called and challenging iron carbon diagram slowly, step by step. You can see this here. Let's understand it in simple steps. We are going to concentrate only on this part in this video. You can see that this part of the iron carbon diagram is more complex, which we will handle in the next video. Okay, stay tuned to the end of this video and also the next video to understand it in totality. So gentlemen, quickly put in the comment section, waiting for the next video if you are fascinated. Anyway, I am fascinated. So let's begin. We all know that a substance has something called a solidifying point or a melting point. Substance exists as liquid above this temperature and as a solid below this temperature. So, if you look at iron, our favorite metal on shape, you can see that at temperatures above 1538, it is in liquid state and at temperatures below, it will solidify. When iron solidifies, the atoms arrange themselves in a unique and particular way. It is called austenite. This arrangement of the iron is called austenite. If you imagine the cube and name the vertices as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. up to 8, you can see that iron occupies each vertex and also the center of every face of the cuboid. So effectively, there are 14 atoms of iron in one cuboid. In this video, we are going to cool it only up to 900 degrees. Lot of things are going to happen if we cool it further. But that will become very complicated and we will handle it in the next video. Steel is in fact a mixture of iron and carbon. We all know about that. The carbon in steel exists in different ways. To understand this, let us look at iron as a unique substance and understand the cooling of iron. Next, we will look at iron carbide Fe3C as a unique substance and under, understand its cooling. Don't go by valency of carbon etc. just in case you still remember from your school days. Fe3C as a combination of covalent and ionic bonds 
forming a crystalline structure. This particular compound, Fe3C, we call it as cementite. And finally, we will understand the cooling of this mixture of iron and carbon. You will see later that in the iron carbon diagram, the study revolves around the percentage of carbon in steel. The carbon will actually be in this particular compound called cementite. To proceed further, we need to understand a particular concept called eutectic mixture and eutectic ratio. Let's move on. Here exactly we are going to see that. Here we see that substance A solidifies at this temperature T1. Similarly, substance B solidifies at this temperature T2. Now, if you have a mixture of A and B, we expect the following. A will begin to solidify at T1. Then B will begin to solidify at T2. So basically at temperature T2, the entire mixture should be solid. But this is exactly what will not happen. You will uh, surprisingly see that the entire mixture solidifies at a temperature far below the solidifying temperature of individual A or B. The complete solidifying temperature of the mixture happens at a particular unique ratio of the substances A and B. This is called the eutectic ratio. If the ratio of the mixture is anything other than this unique ratio, either one of them will start solidifying first. At a temperature basis the ratio and then when the ratios of the substance A and B reach that eutectic ratio, suddenly the entire mixture solidifies. Now what has this got to do with steel? To answer this question, we consider the two substances as iron and carb iron and iron carbide, cementite. Now we are on our way to developing the iron carbon diagram as we had promised. Here we see that if you consider iron, it will solidify at 1538 degrees centigrade. If you consider cementite, it will solidify at 1220 degrees centigrade. So by all logic, as we had seen earlier, when there is a mixture of iron and cementite, the iron should become solidification at 1538 and cementite at 1220 and the whole mixture should solidify at 1220. That is the temperature of cementite. But gentlemen, iron and cementite will behave exactly like how we saw earlier. They form a eutectic mixture. The complete solidification point of the mixture will depend upon a certain percentage of iron and carbon. Yes, the eutectic ratio. Uh, if the ratio is 4.3% carbon, the solidifying temperature is 1146, which is much lower than either iron or cementite. This point is called the eutectic point for iron and cement. The substance formed is called leduberite. Pure leduberite is formed when there is a particular ratio of iron to carbon. That is the eutectic ratio, which is 4.3% of carbon in the mixture. Now let us see what happens when the percentage of carbon in mixture before cooling is not 4.3. If it is low, you can see that as the cooling happens, iron solidifies to austenite and comes out of solution. But this makes the percentage of carbon in the liquid mixture increase and then the mixture moves right along this particular curve. Eventually the percentage of carbon will become 4.3. Now the entire liquid mixture solidify, solidifies as leduberite. The resultant mixture is austenite plus leduberite. Similarly, if we start from this point, we can see that first the cementite will separate out. Hence the percentage of cementite in the mixture solution progressively decreases and eventually the ratio of iron to carbon in mixture reaches 4.3% and then the entire mixture suddenly solidifies as leduberite. The resultant mixture now is cementite plus leduberite. So now coming into the more practical point, we need to be aware that cementite is very hard and brittle. And as the more the cementite in the final solidified mixture, we have more hardness, brittleness, etc. of the resulting steel. We need different hardness and different properties of steel to make different parts. Each part has its own requirement. So the manipulation of carbon content in iron plays a very crucial and significant role uh, like, uh, like in the manufacture of different components of engine or any equipment. On the same note, we say that if the percentage of carbon in steel is approximately about up to 2%, we will call it as steel. And if carbon percentage increases more than 2%, we call it as cast iron. So why did the name cast iron come into play? The answer is very, very simple. The material is cast. That means it is poured. That means it has to be in liquid form. So in this context, we can easily see that maybe 1000 years back, 
when people had less technology iron carbon mixtures uh, where carbon was high were in liquid state at the lower temperature compared to low carbon steel so people were able to cast steel much earlier till technology picked up to enable people attain higher temperatures to keep iron and low percentage carbon mixture in liquid state then came the material of cast steel uh, iron carbon diagram stops at 6.67% of carbon because at this point it is 100% cementite which is very hard and useless for all practical applications it does not have free iron if carbon percentage increases beyond this it will be in the form of free graphite which will be useless for any practical application and further study well we lend the video here this is just the intro the game has not even begun it is just going to become more complex we have seen iron cooling only up to 1000 degrees but we need to find out what happens when we cool iron further of course we need to see of course we are going to use all this steel components at room temperature only correct well lots and lots of doubts and unanswered questions we'll discuss all these and also about the heat treatment understand the logic etc in the next video so don't forget to quickly write in the comment waiting for the next video and then we will be bang on to become a not a master but at least uh, somewhat better in this uh, business of material science I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much. See you in the next.